that one emergency? Yes, the uh, wall just broke at Lock and Sheeta. The landslide just happened again. Okay, where is it at? Lock and Sheeta. At Lock and Sheeta? Yeah, the landslide. The news service was in town uh, interviewing people that were trapped on the highway because the, the canyon north of us had failed and blocked the highway. As the news crew was leaving town, they saw me standing out by my house, and they stopped and asked if it would be all right if they did an interview, and I said, sure. So they set up their camera, and I stood in the alley next to my house. As they started the interview, the hill behind me failed. I saw my two neighbors, the two twins, Annie and Bree, they were 20 years old, frantically running past the front window looking over their right shoulder and instantly I knew it was the mountain. The next nanosecond, everything was in nanoseconds, it happened so fast and I, I said a prayer, God help me through this and I ran for that closet and grabbed a coat and tried to pull myself into the closet and my upper body as the house came down the house actually pushed me into the closet. And I was prone, basically body surfing with it now. Now I'm part of it. Crash through the house next door. Get hit on the head and the back with boards and sticks. I went over something sharp and it cut my stomach and I lifted up and I just rode it out and all of a sudden it stopped. Right as I pulled up, I look over. I believe my eyes are saying I, I double take and there was a person in a car next to me and I said hey uh, did that actually just happen I, I it, was that did the hill just fall down and uh, they're like yeah I think so and next thing you know it's dead quiet and people started pouring out of the houses coming out of the houses and, and screaming and yelling and so I grab one of the people coming out I'm like hey how how bad is this? What? Where's the houses? Where'd they, where'd they stop? Or it, is it just a house? Or, and they said, no, man, there's blocks. We could hear ladies yelling and screaming, and their house had collapsed on top of them, and it slid next to the house that was next to theirs. So we climbed into the house next door and could see we couldn't get to them. And all you hear is power lines snapping and gas hissing from the mains breaking start digging a little bit and it was almost like a closet or it's like this little box and we pulled the first girl out it was pretty quick and as we handed her up um, I heard a muffled muffled really slight help and so we're trying to figure it out like where's it coming from so I were yelling back hello hello and she it was Nadine and she's hello I'm like where are you she, I'm, I don't know I'm down I mean I was sitting in my living room and down here. I'm like, okay, you injured? She's like, I don't know, I can't move, I can't really feel anything. I'm pinned down here. When the fire department showed up, and we were down in there digging stuff out, and we're not stopping, we're still going, going, going. They're like, hey, you guys gotta stop, and you don't have any fire material on, you guys gotta get out of here, or you're gonna, you know, die if this place blows up. Some of the things I saw that day were, it was, it was really, it was really impressive, you know, what people were doing and, and how they, they're putting their own lives at risk. Just Dudes that lived there, you know, they, they didn't have to do that. And, and uh, you really see the best in human nature when, when a situation like that happens. My arm was crushed between the rocks of my fireplace. I thought I would lose my arm. This hand was the only thing I could move, right here, this much. And my head was totally packed in. And what I had, I had created my only airspace, which was from my arms. So the first order of business was I had to get myself breathing. I'm not breathing. So I, and I start moving my chest up and down to massage my lungs. And it went on, and it went on, and it went on. And I thought I was not gonna be successful, and finally my lungs relaxed a little, and I got a little air, and a little more, and a little more. I heard stomp, 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 stomp. Diane, Diane, and it was non-muffled. And I came out of my meditation, 
and I, it was Brett, and I yelled, Brett, and he didn't hear me. And I realized how weak I was. I, I'm sure I had run out of air by that time. I just forced it out as hard as I could, and he did hear that one. And there were also other rescues going on at the same time, so there were several saws going on. So when one saw stopped, they all had to stop. And then after, let's see how long was that? That was an hour and a half, so three hours. So it was a total of four and a half hours that I was there. I still sometimes can't believe that I survived that and that I'm as whole as I am. The whole thing's a miracle. And I think my lock and cheetah days are over as far as living there. I probably have a hard time sleeping with that mountain above me.